Hello, this is Pastor David Stewart of Destiny Preparation, and we're excited because we're moving through the month of January, and this has been a very special month. This is a month of consecration for us here. We have been praying and fasting before the Lord, looking to see what God is going to do, expecting and anticipating miracles, signs and wonders, as in the original church. I believe that same presence that was there in the first church is still with us now. And in fact, I believe it's going to get even more intense as time goes forward, because the Bible shows us that as this world becomes worse and worse, more filled with sin, it says in the last days that God said he's going to pour out his spirit. There is a counter spirit of the presence of God that's going to get stronger, even as the enemy seems like he's getting stronger. So we're believing that God is going to restore. He's going to bring forth signs and wonders and miracles as his people really turn themselves to him and believe. That's what we're praying for this month. That's what we're believing for. This is the year, we believe, of the activated church. God is getting this church ready to move and operate in his power and in his presence. We're believing in the Holy Spirit coming forth and turning lives around about people being infilled with the presence of God, about the gifts of the Spirit moving and operating in the church. We are believing for the dynamic power of God to take us not only to the next level, but to the next dimension. I'm believing for that, and we're declaring it right now in the name of Jesus. So I want to encourage you to come and be a part of this, part of the movement that God is beginning here at Destiny Preparation Church. You're invited to come and join us. We're, we're located at 1405 Lyle Avenue in the, in the city of Rochester, right across the street from McDonald's. We would love to have you come and join us here and just see for yourself. If you come in and don't feel the presence of God, you don't have to come back again. But if you come and you feel that there's something happening here dynamic, then listen, you'll know this is the place you need to be. God bless you. I pray that this will encourage you to come and join us again. Services Sunday, Wednesday, Saturday morning prayer at 8 a.m. You can call us from wherever you are on the prayer line. In fact, if you know someone that's sick or afflicted or in need of prayer, you can take the phone right to them and let them hear it lying on their sick bed or wherever they are put it on the speakerphone, let it play at work, whatever the case may be. Let the power and presence of God touch you and anoint you. We're believing for something great throughout this month of January that's going to lead us throughout the remainder of the year. Now that takes us to a sermon which I believe is as pumped up as I am right now. It's called Get Ready. And we are doing exactly that. We're getting ready for what God is about to release. And he's already releasing, but there is so much more to come. I hope that you'll be excited about it and come and join us here as well. God bless you. Pray this will, will, will inspire you and that you'll come join us in the house of God real soon. I want to talk about getting ready for what God is going to do. And I really want to talk about uh, the mindset, the expectation. I want to talk about your, your, the way you're thinking about things because your mindset is very important. And the things that you do, the things that you're going after, your mindset about it is very important because your mindset has an influence on your outcome. How many of you have come to realize that when you have a bad attitude about something, uh, it, it tends to bring about bad stuff? I expect it not to work. And guess what? It didn't work. A negative outlook typically establishes a negative view and a negative perspective about things. Your, your mindset attaches to whatever it is that you have going on. If you're, if you're doubtful, if you're fearful, if you're upset about something, if you're expecting the worst, you tend to draw the worst. And so you become your own self-fulfilled prophecy. I told you that wasn't going to work. I told you that wasn't worth putting no time into. I told you they were no good. Mm -hmm. They were good everybody else, for everybody else, but for you, they were no good. And I told you, I knew it, because our outlook, our mindset has a great impact on everything that goes on around us. We sometimes see the world through very filtered glasses. We see, and the interesting thing about a filter glass, you ever put like sunglasses on and everything looked a certain way before and you put your sunglasses on and now everything looks orange? Uh, or everything looks blue, uh, and you're like, wait a minute, what happened? Something different, right? Because you're looking through filtered glasses, and when you look through those orange glasses, all of a sudden everything has an orange tint to it. You have a filter that passes through your mind, and when you become negative about things, it becomes a filter to everything you see. Every time somebody twitches, you're like, they're twitching about me. Uh-huh. 
Every time somebody looks to their left, every, mm -hmm, see, I was sitting on their left. See that? They were looking at me. They always, why are you always watching me? Uh-huh. Amen. We, we, we will filter things in such a way and interpret them to how we're feeling, how where we're at in a situation. And so we have to be conscious of the fact that that we can cause a negative experience. We can create a negative or failing environment. This could have worked, but because we had our mindset that it wasn't going to work, it didn't work. This situation could have worked out all right, but we we put it in we put it in the grave before it even started. And so we have to be conscious of the mindset that we take into things. Your, it, it will impact both your your emotional st and state and your persona. When, when you have a negative a mindset, you get emotion. It messes with you emotionally. Now you're depressed. Now you're frustrated. Nothing even happened yet. Uh, you, you're just intense and in anticipation of what's going to happen, of the destruction. And so now you you are getting nervous breakdowns and you're sweating and palpitating and all kind of stuff going on. And nothing's even happened yet. But your mindset can throw off your whole personality, your whole emotional state. Some of us are physically sick for stuff that hasn't even happened yet. Because our mindset takes us to a place of expectation of the wrong. Now, you can flip the switch on this, and some of us have a positive outlook. You know, some people, you know, half glass, half full, some half empty. Some people is always half empty. No, there ain't never enough in there. It's always should be more. Some people have a positive outlook. Well, you know, it's on its way. It's a little bit more than it was. It's headed in the right direction. Same glass, different perspective of it. When you have a positive outlook on things, it brings an expectation of positive things. I don't know about you, but I have a sense of expecting something better, something great. I'm always looking forward to next year. Uh huh. Some people are like, oh no, what's going on? oh Lord, what's going to happen now? What what bomb is going to drop next year? Oh gosh, what's going to happen? Here come the income taxes. Oh God, here comes the next problem. The, the more problems. Some of us expect more and more and more and more problems. I'm expecting more and more relief. I'm expecting deliverance. I'm expecting change. I'm expecting next level. So you've got to capture the right mindset. You want a mindset of expectation, of anticipation. Amen. Because when your mindset's in a certain way, then your behavior begins to move in a certain way. You begin to carry yourself different. You can tell the difference between somebody who's excited and somebody who's depressed. You can just look at them and tell where they at. Well, oh, God, here they what? what? What happened? What, ha what happened? What happened to them today? The hair ain't combed right. You know, they ain't shaved in about three weeks. Uh, they wearing their raggedy clothes. They, they, they're not expecting nothing. Amen. I'm expecting to meet somebody. Come on. I'm expecting to meet somebody. Amen. I'm going to get dressed up. I'm going to get I'm going to be looking cute. Come on, somebody. Amen. Because I'm expecting something to happen here. Uh, Y'all know what I'm talking about? I'm, I'm trying to tell you, your mindset flashes all over your body. It changes your behavior. It changes your responses. It changes how you carry yourself. A depressed person got your shoulders all down, looking all down. Amen. I want to see nobody eye to eye. Amen. Somebody, when you when you go into an interview, uh, uh, your body language speaks a lot of where you're at. And if you're going in not anticipating getting the job, and so you start making excuses about everything. Well, you know, I, I thought I could do I think I could do it, you know, and yeah, I had some problems in the past. I know you saw that and I've gone through this and then no, no, I'm gonna talk about all that. You know, I'm talking about how you talk about how yes, I can do this job. I'm I'm ready to do it right now. Hey, Amen. You can we can pick this up. Give me five minutes. I don't in fact I don't even need to make the call. Where show me to the floor. I'm ready to go right now. Your mindset, your attitude changes, amen, based on where your mindset is. And so it's important for you to understand that how you feel about a thing impacts the experience itself. We can look at the same thing. We can sit in the same movie. And depending on what your expectation is, one person can come out seeing one thing and another person come out seeing another. Amen. One person comes out saying, oh, it's great, man. It was fantastic. I got into the story. It was wonderful. Another person comes up, man, they had this problem and I saw they messed this up and they said, I don't know, they twisted up this line and that wasn't right. Same movie. We look, were we looking at, were we in the same place? 
Because your, your mindset will impact your overall experience. And so we have to be conscious of our mindset toward things. We, we've got to prepare uh, as, as people of God and just in general, we have to prepare ourselves mentally and emotionally for great things. Somebody say great things. It's time to stop preparing for the disasters. It's time to stop setting up for failure. It's time to stop being in an expectation of the shoe to drop and things to go wrong. It's time for us to expect something great to happen. We've got to get our mindset. I'm talking to all of us. Everybody, look around you. Everybody, look around you. Everybody. We, we. Somebody say we, 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 we. We have to get our minds in a place where we're expecting something great to happen. Often, sometimes our, our past experiences can cause us to, to close off our expectation. Well, you know, last time I got excited about something, something bad happened. Last time I said I was going to do this, uh, problems came up. Last time I made a commitment like that, it was a disaster. And the problem is if we hold ourselves back by yesterday's problems and yesterday's failures, then we're going to constrain our future based on what we experienced in the past. As a result of that, I can never be any more than this. I can never have any more than this. You see, some people, as soon as they start getting successful, they mess something up. You ever see about self-destructive? Amen. Just when it starts looking like it's going to be good, they throw some kind of self-bomb in there and just let the whole thing go. And then they say, see, I knew it wasn't going to work out. You can't be constrained by what didn't work yesterday. Yesterday is yesterday. Tell somebody yesterday is gone. Yesterday, that's gone. We, we can't be held back. By yesterday's problems, yesterday's issues, listen, yesterday's fights don't, don't matter. Amen. Because because you had problems yesterday don't mean you have to have problems tomorrow. Just because things went wrong and things went awry yesterday doesn't mean uh, that you have to expect the same thing to happen again and again. We have to change our mindset so that we can get out of our rut. Mm -hmm. and get out of our own way mm -hmm. and get out of our own problems mm -hmm. and lift ourselves up to the next level. How many of you ready to climb up out of the stuff you've been in the past and see something better happen in your tomorrow? Got to get our mindsets right. We, we constrain ourselves. We constrain ourselves. So therefore, I can never trust anybody again. Because the last time I trusted somebody, oh, Lord, have mercy. I'll never trust. I'm not going to put myself in that kind of position ever again. Anybody know what I'm talking about today? Not going to try that again. Last time I tried that, it was a mess. It didn't work. And so we, we commit ourselves. We constrain ourselves. And, and so because we, I'm not going to try it again. Well, last time something else happened. Last time was a whole nother story. You went a whole nother day today. Amen. Today is not yesterday. Tell somebody today is not yesterday. Tell them yesterday is gone. We're dealing with tomorrow now. We're dealing with a new day. Listen, the sun's going to come up again. Uh huh. The sun is going to rise up again and it's going to be a new day. And just be today is not based on yesterday. Amen. I guarantee you the weather is going to be different tomorrow than it was today. I'm not saying what way it's going to go. I'm just saying it's going to be different. It's going to be a new day. There's going to be new, be new challenges and there's going to be new blessings. Amen. But I can't, I can't deal with my tomorrow as if every tomorrow is, is based on yesterday. Uh, we, we avoid things because I don't want to experience. I had so much pain. Pain will cause you to leave something alone real quick. Uh, the pain that I felt under that situation, I don't want to be nowhere close to that ever again. I'm not hanging out with them people. I'm not trusting them folks. I'm not putting them in my life. I'm keeping out my house. I I don't want them in my thoughts. I'm checking them off of my Facebook. I'm getting out of my social. I'm done. I'm getting away. Nobody. I'm not talking to nobody no more. <laughs> Amen. We, we get in that place. Amen. Where, where we just, just, we just, we move away from everything because of our past. But you need to understand today, you cannot quit trying. Just because something went wrong yesterday, just because part A or plan A didn't work, that doesn't mean you shouldn't try a plan B. Sometimes you need to try plan A over again. A wasn't a bad plan. It was just a bad situation. Don't quit trying. Don't stop believing. Don't give up because greatness is still ahead of you. Somebody say greatness is still ahead of me. 
How many of you believe greatness is still ahead of you? Come on, declare it right now. Greatness is ahead of me. I don't care what yesterday was. I don't care what problems showed up. I don't care who tried to stop me. Amen. My best days are still in front of me. How many of you believe that your best days are still in front of you? The Bible teaches us about having faith, 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 faith. Faith is something we live by. Faith is something we endure by. Faith is what keeps us going. Regardless, amen, of what happened yesterday, I'm still believing. I have faith in my life. And faith as a mindset produces positive outlooks. When you have faith, and remember faith, I have faith in God, which means I trust in God. When I trust that God is in control of my situations, it allows me to look past whatever may have happened in the past. Because whatever situation it was, no matter who it was, no matter what happened, my faith allows me to believe that God is greater than whatever tried to take me down. Oh, yeah, it tried to take me down, but it didn't get me. No, no, I, I'm, I'm still here. Amen. I'm still walking. I'm still moving. I'm still alive. That means I've still got another tomorrow. And regardless of how deep the snare was, no matter how painful the situation, thank God I've got another chance. How many of you are glad to know you've got another chance? Listen, as long as you've got another day, you've got another chance. As long as you've got more breath in your lungs, you have another chance. Amen. Another chance not for failure, another chance for something great, another chance for another level. I may even miss it once or twice. Amen. Thank God for the children of Israel because they went around the wilderness a bunch of times. Amen. They missed it a lot of times, but they still had another chance to get to their promised land. Listen, get this. When God says you've got something else coming, it's coming. It doesn't matter, amen, if you missed. It may have even been my fault. I'm not even going to blame the devil. I messed that one up. But thank God for another chance because God will not give up on you. I'm not doing this by me. I'm trusting in God. And if God says there's greatness in front of me, guess what? It's got to come. It's got to come. It's got to come. It's got to come. Hallelujah. And something about faith, when you have a mindset of faith, when you have a mindset that believes and expects something great, then faith is a driving force to action. Faith will cause you to do stuff that you typically wouldn't do. Amen. I will do things, amen, because I believe, because I'm optimistic. I, I would just sit here, but because I'm expecting something, I'm going to get up from here. I, I got some things to do. I got to get prepared. Amen. If you, if you weren't expecting anyone in your house, you just lay down. Down, put on your bathrobe, amen, get on your couch, get a little blanket, amen, turn on the TV, get the fireplace going, chilling, amen, doing what you got to do. But when you're expecting somebody to come over, wait a minute, I got to get up from here. I got to get cleaned up. My house has got to get right. I, I got to be prepared for the guests that I'm coming in. I'm look, If you're looking forward, amen, to somebody coming and visiting you and being with you, you when you have an expectation that they're coming, Mm -hmm. You're going to start doing some things. You're going to start preparing like you're ready for something to happen. If you think you're about to get a new job, mm, come on, somebody. I, I didn't get my clothes right. I get me a new suit. I got to get my outfits ready. Amen. Because I'm stepping up. Amen. I used to do this job over here, but right now I'm about to be a manager or somebody. I'm about to be somebody's leader. So guess what? I got to look the part. I got to get clean. I got to get, I got to get ready. Your faith, your outlook will cause you to change your behaviors. So faith is a driving force to action. Everybody say action. In other words, because of what I'm believing about God, it's going to cause you to do some things, do some things, do some things. So oftentimes we want to sit and wait. And we talked about that a few weeks ago. We're just waiting on God. God, when are you going to do it? When are you going to change this? When are you going to fix the problem? God, when are you going to turn it around? Your faith will cause you to get ready for what's coming. If, I, if, I, if, I, if I'm not sure, I'm sitting on the side waiting. But if I believe God is about to turn it around, I'm getting ready to walk through that door. Right. I'm getting ready to step into that another level. I don't know when, exactly when it's coming, but when it happens, I'm ready. When the children of Israel got ready to leave out of Egypt, they couldn't wait for God, amen, to do something and then go. He said, you need to get your stuff on tonight. Get your clothes on. Get your bags packed. Get your swords. Get whatever you got. Get ready. Be at the door. Because when this door opens up, you're going to need to move. We've got to have them. Listen, if you really believe God's about to open the door, you ought to be on the other side of it, ready to walk out of it. 
Amen. Faith will cause you to get ready to move. James 2 and 20 says, with faith without works is dead. Amen. So you don't have real faith if your faith is not pushing you. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. If you have real faith, your faith ought to be pushing you. It ought to be compelling you to get ready for what God is going to do. If I really believe a breakthrough is coming, it's going to push me to get ready to operate, to move in the midst of that breakthrough. If I really believe God's about to change something, I'm not just going to sit back and just wait. Mm -hmm, I'm waiting for you to change. I'm waiting to see it. And I ain't seen nothing yet. Eh, no, nothing happening. If I really believe the situation is about to change, then I'm getting ready to step into the situation. I'm getting excited about it. I'm getting ready. I'm looking forward to it. I can hardly sleep at night because I know tomorrow something great is about to happen. I have a sense of expectation expectation that causes me to act. Faith establishes a mindset and an attitude. It changes those things in you. It impacts your behaviors. Your faith ought to turn you around. Listen, if this is a church full of people with faith, you ought to look like faith people. Amen. You ought to move like faith people. Somebody ought to be barely able to sit in your chair. You ought to be barely able to sit quietly when you realize what God is about to open up for you. There ought to be an expectation in you that stirs you to get ready to do something. Come on, somebody. I need to hear an amen from somebody. Listen, a person with confidence behaves different than a person with doubt. Somebody that believes, amen, if you're, if you're a believer, you shouldn't look like the same as somebody who's a doubter. They, we ought to be able to point you out of the crowd. Oh, there's somebody that's ready. There's somebody that's looking to do something. You ought to stand out because, amen, while everybody else is waiting and crying and weeping and worrying about what's happening today, your faith ought to make you step up and look like somebody who's expecting something to happen. You can't go into any competition questioning whether you can win amen teams amen it's football season teams can't go out there wondering well i think maybe we i don't know if we can win this game i don't know you have to have a mindset we we about to take them out we about to tear them up they don't know what's coming after them right now they're looking at us thinking one thing but come on now they about to get surprised because we have come to take this game over you have to have a mindset listen if you go out thinking you're gonna you're gonna lose already you've lost before you even started Say to God, we've got to have a mindset of victorious people. We have to have a mindset of overcomers. We have to have a mindset, amen, that are ready to go out, amen, and get something done. Listen, winners don't expect to lose. Amen. Come on, somebody. Winners don't expect to lose. I didn't come this far to lose. I didn't step into God to lose. I'm not here to quit. I expect nothing but victory. I expect nothing but overcoming. I don't care what it looks like right now. It's going to turn around because I'm on the winning side. Tell somebody I'm on the winning side. I don't care what the devil throws at me. I don't care how rough it may seem. I don't care how hard the day might be. Amen. This is just a day. But there's another day that's coming after this. I don't care how great the test might be. Amen. My mindset is beyond today's troubles. My mindset is on the victory that I know is on the way. Hallelujah. That's why I can stand in the midst of my pain and still be smiling. Hallelujah. That's why, amen, I can have tears down my eyes but still lift up my hands. Amen. Because I know God said he'll never leave me and he'll never forsake me. It doesn't matter what your day looks like. God is still on my side. Hallelujah. Tell somebody victory is still mine. Come on, declare it. Victory is still mine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's something about faith that'll cause you to move in a different way, act in a different way, behave in a different way. Let me put it to you this way. Faith steps up. Faith steps up. Faith will cause you to get up when everybody else is sitting down. Faith will cause you to run when everybody else wants to stop. Faith will get you on the move when everybody else wants to quit. You may be tired, but my faith will keep me going. Somebody say faith steps up. That's why David, amen, when he stood before Goliath, come on, you know where I'm going, amen, an obstacle that seemed too big for anybody. Listen, Goliath was far beyond David's personal ability. He had no chance of defeating this Goliath giant by himself, amen. There was no possible way he could outsword fight him. He, could, he wasn't stronger than him. He wasn't bigger than him. He wasn't faster than him. He had far less experience. There was 
was no possible way for him to defeat this obstacle. This obstacle was so large that even those that knew how to fight wouldn't fight. Come on. Even those that were professionals at doing this said, no, 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 we're not getting in this. Here's David, a shepherd, has no idea what he's doing, has no idea how to fight, has never fought another man. And now the largest man in the territory is standing against him. He should have quit up. He should have quit. He should have shut up. He should have sat down. But faith caused him to step up. Oh, somebody ought to get excited right there. Amen. Faith will cause you to step up against things, not because of your ability. Somebody said, not by my might, nor by my power. But faith caused him to step up because my God is more than able to defeat anybody that comes against me. Somebody ought to say, greater is he that's in me than he that is in the world. It's not by me, but my God will cause victory no matter what comes against me. <laughs> 